time. What a fabulous opportunity, right? Like what Gandhi predicted in, in South Africa. If Rajapaksa was able to legislate that all people who lived in Sri Lanka in 2009 and who went to want to come back would be classified as Sri Lankans as opposed to Tamil, Singhala, Muslim, up country, low country, you see, then we could have had a foundation to build upon. Okay, can I ask you a question? And this is going to be a brutal question. Yeah. How many pr uh, prime ministers, yeah. how many ministers, MPs and presidents have been killed by the Tamil Tigers throughout that 26 years? One president, and they almost killed another president, that's Sandhika Kumaruttam. Then they eliminated all the moderate Tamil leaders, and they also... How many all? Uh, ten, five, six? Or ten, ten okay. at least ten. And on the Sri Lankan side, on the Sinhalese side... So are you saying Tamil Tigers were an extremist group? Obviously. Okay, so, so they were not like moderates. Moderates, yeah. And then what, do you, what else did you do on the Sinhalese side? What happened? I mean... Did the Tamils attack Sinhalese and course. kill them as well? They did. Obviously. So senior members of the parliament? Senior, senior parliamentary members were assassinated. And this was part of Tamil Tigers' fight for independence. Yep, you can say so. Independence of Sri Lanka into two different segments. One for Tamil precise. and one for yeah. I mean, Sinhalese. All the decent, moderate politicians on both sides were eliminated by the Tamils. That is the problem that so we have today. This that is the problem I mean, that we have today. Gentlemen, you may not be supporting Tamil Tigers as an organization. I'm not sure if you do. I'm not asking that question. I'm asking a simple question. It's a small island. I've been there myself. I've traveled quite extensively in the country, it's nice. How can you divide an island so small into two nations? It's one nation, it's one island. How could Tamil Tigers even envisage such a dream to be successful? When they, in population-wise, form less than 15% of the total population. Yes, sir. Uh, how can I come actually take East Pakistan out of India? I, I'm not, we're not talking about East Pakistan today. Exactly. Can I, can I, can I, can I weigh in on that? I mean, Historically speaking, the Tamils had their own had, had their own system of governance until the colonial powers decided that these two uh, separate nations are going to be administratively joined together, and then that becomes as a part of the colonial surgical process uh, of 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 giving independence to these countries, where they recognize it as a state. Now, you asked a very interesting question. You made a very interesting point as to. If the majority is Sinhalese, they form the garments. Now, what's the problem with that? Now, when the, in, in deeply divided societies, and this is a, is a manner of category that you find in, in, in a lot of societies. This is true for Belgium. This is, in fact, true for Scotland in its relationship with the United Kingdom, Quebec with uh, Canada, right. and so on and but so you forth. you can't tell me the last 100 years, yeah. Brits have gone and slaughtered, oh, one second, or Scots have carried out suicide bombing up and no. down the country, killing its prime minister. No, yeah, you, Scots don't do that. Let's not forget Northern Ireland. Yeah, but Northern anyway, Ireland not, is a very different discussion. I mean, we, we, let's let's not let's well, not look at uh, examples no, 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 as let's, 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 no, let's uh, no, why, 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 for a why Northern the Ireland, take Northern up arms? Ireland why is, the Tamils take up arms? Is the question that we need yeah, to well, ask. If you look yeah. at an example of Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland has has become a colony of Britain. Majority yep. of the Irish people want that back to become part of their country. Now, those people who are in Northern Ireland, they may want to remain with Britain. That colonial history and its legacy still lays on, uh, still lives on. I understand that. But give it 10, 15 years time, 25 years time, it's very likely that Northern Ireland would be uh, would have a cessation and would end up in the mainland island. That's a clear history. May, may, may but Sri Lanka may is this. something very different. No, no. It's a small island within which internally Belgium is small. So go on. So small. talk about Sri Lanka. Uh, let, let me talk about Sri Lanka. Yes, I mean, it's, it's important to recognize that, that the Tamils consider themselves to be a nation, mm -hmm. right? And that doesn't necessarily equate into a separate state. In fact, the Tamils have consistently pointed out throughout uh, this, this last 60 years that if there is a settlement within a United State that recognizes the Tamil nation's own sort of distinct contribution within that state, something like the arrangement that you have but not within a unitary state, uh, and, I, and I make the difference between a united and a unitary state, we've said that if Tamil self-determination and nationhood within a united state can be recognized, we are very well willing to recognize uh, a solution but within a united state. state. That's exactly, exactly why the, the LTT took up arms. How did this LTT's, uh, what, what do you call methodology, pay any dividend back to the Tamil? No, and you're going to put much bigger losers no. at the moment. Okay. 
if you look at then then this is an argument uh, against all liberation movements, right? Any 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 movement that no, is no, not a political there is a difference they, they, between liberation movement and an extremist movement. Ab, ab, uh, liberation move. I mean, there is a thin line. Now, what might be a liberation movement to you might be an extremist or a terrorist organization to me. Uh, so 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 this is a political. This is how you look at it politically. Now, if you ask me the question, so you're were saying there, were there, no, let, let me ask something. No, no. What I'm saying is that LTT was was part of, of, of a whole number of militant groups that popped up particularly after 1983. I mean, the LTTE started off, and a number of militant movements started off in, 19, in the mid-1970s after the, after the Constitution of 1970, which absolutely excluded the moderate and leadership. But the point that I'm making is it wasn't just CLTT. It was a whole number of militant groups. It was a liberation movement, a spontaneous call on the part of Tamil to take up arms, because that is the way that you're going to defend so, your family you and your nation. LTT, and, but but you let, me say, let me concede this about the LTTE, yeah, yeah. that as part of the liberation struggle, there were excesses. Will you, will you tell me that there were certain mistakes and grave errors uh, that were made as part of the, the conduct of the liberation movement? I would say yes. And, and, and would you say that whatever the, the, the LTT stands accused of in terms of war crimes needs to be investigated? We say yes, there, let there be international independent investigation as a whole. But what we are saying is that there is a political background in terms of what the LTT's armed struggle was about. And that armed struggle is about justice for the Tamil nation that the Tamil nation has to be recognized either within the Sri Lankan state as, as a community that, that, that can self-rule. We use the words of self-government, self-determination, and self-determination doesn't have to be necessarily a separate state. But when that self-determination is not recognized within a state, and when we've been persecuted and killed persistently, and when it matter, becomes a matter of security, a life and death question for the Tamil people, and if that life and death question for the Tamil people can only be recognized in a separate state, we might also have to think about it. Are we going to say, just because we are going to keep the country united, that we can't ha have a separate state if that's the only way that you are going to provide security for the Tamil people? Let's remember that the armed uh, violence of the Tamil youth was a response to state terrorism. Take, for example, the 1983 riots. I'm sure Mr. Oparajay won't, won't say no to this. There were more than 3,000 Tamils who were massacred in Kilambu. You see, there were lists. I mean, people, people have academically commented about this enough. The International Commission of Jurists at that point pointed out that 1983 was possibly a genocide. At that time, it was a genocidal massacre. What happened? The government provided lists. Voters list. Again, this is something hopefully that Mr. Jagalaga won't deny. W voters list. I didn't, uh, giving the attackers and looters of Tamil businesses and establishment and Tamil residences I didn't, uh, as to how to identify. So I'm saying, yes, I mean, let's look at this in a much more complex way. This is a complex problem. But... Let's also recognize that the Tamils taking up arms and, and there being an armed struggle was part of a, of a whole narration in terms of the post-independence Sri Lanka okay. state, so, so, uh, leaving really no space for the Tamils so in terms of uh, 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 an existential problem. Pause, pause with that. So, uh, uh, Upali, here is a very powerful and a very compelling uh, point that Guru Paran makes, which is Tamils were left with no option. They were strangled, they were suffocated almost. They, were, they, were, they had no room to maneuver except react to the Sinhalese-led government's uh, uh, terrorist activities, state-led. What do you say to that? I don't think so. I mean, we, in Sri Lanka, we have had similar problems, both from the Tamil community and the Sinhala community. Mm. A brutal war was fought by the government against the Sinhalese community. In two, in, in two periods. In 1971 there was insurrection. In the 1980s there was insurrection. There is no cry for, in, for an international investigation with regard to the Sinhalese youth that were eliminated. Is it because the, the state had no choice. Well, uh, but how well, can you justify a state taking a brutal role in having no choice but to eliminate its citizens? I, yeah, I mean, that, that, that sounds like Hitler. Not Hitler. I mean, they, I actually, the, 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 the type of the type yeah, of the killings, things. the type of killings that the LTT and the JVP did, right? The government had no choice. Okay. The government had no so choice. So, the pause with that. Uh, government had no choice but to behave like Hitler, not brutalizing not Hitler. and killing its own people. No, but no, no. perhaps that's not the right conclusion. But whatever the conclusion is, we'll continue after the break. Don't go too far away. Salam alaikum.
place, nice people, uh, quite a pleasant culture. It wasn't, it wasn't so intense like you see in India or Bangladesh. It wasn't on your face type of a culture. It had the flavor of a, a developing country with prosperity and education embedded in the culture of people. Um, and yet we see the behavior within the political realm no different to some of the less developed and less literate countries in the, in the neighboring area. And it is sad, isn't it? It is very sad. We're still asking, is it justifiable for a state to behave like Hitler in order to quell the so-called uprising in, in one hand, and on the other hand, perhaps for peace and prosperity of the country, that's the only step it thought viable. Uh, evidence says that there has been no trouble since, apparently. The country is very prosperous, it's doing very well. Investments pouring in, China is there, India is there, Britain is there, any other developing na developed nation's interest is opened up because of the current government. What else would you want? I don't understand why Tamils are complaining. Except for the Tamils, actually. What's wrong with the Tamils? Are they not prosper prospering like, from I, the development? I, I appear in a, in, uh, for 192 claimants in the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka and they are only part of 7,500 other claimants who are before the Supreme Court. And this is just an example uh, where the what Ministry of Defense, the Sri Lankan army has taken over private lands belonging to Tamil people. And you will have this and, this is, yeah, and this, uh, this is in Jaffna. Well, not particularly my land. I live in Jaffna town, but I'm talking about more north towards Jaffna where 6,381 acres of land is being taken over in the name of national security from the Tamil people. And this is not just in Jaffna, but also in Menna. And they have not been compensated for it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, it's not even the Which question. is a crime. International crime as well as I'm pretty certain domestic absolutely. crime. Absolutely. So that's one example. So land grabs, as we call it, is happening intensely. I thought it was happening uh, only in Zimbabwe under Mugabe. But here you go, Sri Lanka, add, add Sri Lanka to that list, right? So you have... And, and there is an ethnic dimension to this, uh, dimension to it. I mean, then there is the issue of civilization. I, I can understand it, though. Uh, uh, and this is post-war. No, 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 this is group, post -war. Group, group, look, there has been a huge price that Sri Lankan communities have paid. 26 years of a brutal war. If they don't have security presence up north within the Tamil people, where would they have it? Well, 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 well the, the reason... Uh, now, what, what we have to look at it is this land is not grabbed just for the national interest, as they say, because what the military is doing is now they're cultivating in this land. And they're cultivating and they're bringing out producers to the market and driving poor Tamil farmers away from the, from the livelihood. So if you really look at it, there is a genocidal intent to drive the whole uh, farming community away. Because it is not just, as they say, it's, it's under the pretext of national security, but then how come the, the, the army and the military is actually doing cultivation? This is just one example. The same with the fisheries, the same with the other sectors. So the prosperity, what you see outside, is not the true reality, what you see in the north. Okay, uh, I want to get to you, um, Upadi. Just, just so, to, hold on. Yeah. Who is responsible? I mean, what is the interest here? Is China playing a huge role? And this is a question we're all asking. China has developed two harbors. It's, it's got every interest in developing.